Welcome to our work on the opinion forming potential of AI language technologies. My name is Maurice Jakish and I'm presenting some exciting results today from a collaboration with Advait Bhatt, Daniel Buschek, Lior Salmanson and more Naman. In our research, we explore the possibility that interacting with large language models that generate some views more often than others may change people's opinions. Our study was motivated by the concern that if we surround ourselves with technologies that produce human-like language, new forms of persuasion and manipulation might emerge. I will quickly sketch our conceptual motivation, introduce our experimental design and discuss our results in the next slides. When we look at more conventional forms of persuasion, we have a central persuader who designs a convincing message to influence people. That message is then somehow delivered to users of technologies, and if it works, it changes what they want or think. More recently, behavioral economists and designers have also explored another form of persuasion called nudging, where they set up choices that people get in a certain way to influence their behavior. We take that central insight of nudge theory that choice defaults affect behavior and apply it to the uses of large language models in communication. And we ask, what happens when models make it easier to say certain things, but not others? Uh, what happens when our communication is facilitated by technologies that suggest some opinions more often, but not others? Will it affect what people say and indirectly what other people read and might be convinced by? Will it affect what people think that's what we're looking at in this study. We call this form of persuasion latent persuasion. It is latent because it could be hard to pinpoint for users and even policymakers and system developers when a language model prefers a certain view over others. And because compared to conventional persuasion, persuasion by language models doesn't require a central entity that designs the persuasive messaging, but the language model does all the work. To test how opinionated language models affect people's views, we needed an environment where we could watch people interact with a language model in the process of articulating their own opinion. Since there isn't an application out there for that, we developed our own experimental platform that would give us full control over the model and people's interactions. Uh, we first needed a scenario or task that we would observe people in. We decided to have people write on whether social media is good for society or not. Now, our study isn't specifically about this topic, but we chose it because it is accessible and is relevant to everyone and people have different views on it. We embedded that topic into a mock-up of a social media discussion shown on this slide to make it more realistic. Now, we needed an opinionated language model. We started with um, GPT-3, which in its pre-trained form uh, talks about social media in a somewhat positive way. But for our design, we needed experimental control over the model opinion. So to make the model opinionated, uh, we, knew we used engineered prompts. Uh, this is how it works. Imagine a participant starts writing their social media post and we ask the model to continue it. But we don't just ask the model to continue it, but we insert something before the text the user writes to steer the model. The prompt here consists of the task context as well as specific instructions to the model asking it to argue for a certain opinion. And in many cases, this would work and the model would produce an opinionated argument. We took that um, web app that we discussed in the previous slide and built a writing assistant into it which we connected to this opinionated language model in the backend. So here's a quick demo. On the top, you see instructions for participants. In the center of the page, uh, you see the mock-up of our Reddit discussion, where a user is asking others about their opinion on social media, followed by a reply field where participants type their opinion. The assistant here is configured to generate suggestions whenever users stop typing and to argue that social media is bad for society. So let's try. Once I stop typing, the system generates suggestions and as intended, these suggestions argue that social media is bad. But let's see what happens if I try to argue that social media is good. 
So the model will try to continue the flow of writing, but still will tend to generate the opinion that we have engineered into it. So we took that experiment platform and recruited 1,500 participants from Prolific, who we asked to respond to the Reddit post. We conducted a basic between subjects experimental design, where 500 of those participants didn't see any suggestions in the control group, 500 saw suggestions from a model configured to argue that social media is good, and 500 got suggestions from a model arguing that social media is bad. After participants wrote their posts, we made them complete a survey on their attitude towards social media, and we asked a separate set of 500 crowd workers to evaluate each sentence that participants had written and label whether it argued that social media was good or bad. So the, what did we find? The first thing we looked at was the opinion participants had expressed in their social media posts. Um, remember that we had taken each of their posts and asked crowd workers to label whether each sentence argued social media was good or bad. And this graph shows the aggregate opinions expressed in participants' social media posts. On the top, we have participants writing with a model that argues social media is good. Center, participants who didn't see any model suggestions. And bottom, participants who were assisted by a model configured to argue social media is bad. On the x-axis, you see what percentages of participants' uh, sentences express which opinion. In blue in the center, we see that 36% of the sentences participants wrote in the control group argued that social media is bad for society. In orange, we see that in the same group, 28% of sentences argued social media is good for society. So participants were slightly more critical of social media in the control group. In the top row, where participants used a model arguing that social media is bad for society, that has changed. Here, 45% of sentences argued that social media is good for society, and only 25% argued it is bad. We see the opposite result in the treatment group on the bottom, where participants co-wrote with a model arguing that social media is bad. So co-writing with an opinionated language model changed the opinions participants expressed in their social media posts. There could be different reasons for that, and one could be people just found it more convenient to go with the model suggestions. But another reason for the difference in the post could be that writing with the model actually changed participants' opinions. So we look at the results of the survey they completed later to see if there was any difference in post-task opinion. On this graph, I showed the responses that people gave when asked, would you say social media is good for society in a survey after the writing task? And when they had used a model that argued social media is good for society, 45% of them said, yes, social media is good, compared to 26 who said yes when they wrote with a language model configured to argue that social media is bad for society. In both cases, participants' attitudes differed significantly from those of the control group who had not received any suggestions in their writing. So we know that not only did the model change what participants wrote, but it also changed what participants thought. These results uh, show that it is quite possible that using large language models in communication can systematically shift people's opinions. In addition to a scenario where models convince people by accident, there is a darker scenario where powerful actors use language models to intentionally change people's opinions in a way that aligns with their interests. Or just as we've seen in the case of social media, the tech firms building these models realize that they can monetize the opinion forming power of their technology to offer new pervasive forms of advertising. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, I want to say thank you to my collaborators, Advait Bhatt, Daniel Bushek, Leo Salmanson, and Mornaman, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts and questions.